So many of you know from reading the gospel according to Mark that it can be exhausting to read Mark's gospel. It is most assuredly inspiring, but it can be tiring because the gospel is intense. Jesus keeps an exhausting pace throughout the whole of the scriptural story. St. Mark, our namesake of our parish and inspiration, uses a literary term called parataxis, where he, he gathers together stories of Jesus and he strings them along like pearls on a string as they are loosely associated with each other. Amazingly, the word and begins 410 of the 678 verses of the original Greek version. This is something I happen to love because I was always taught never begin a sentence with and. Mark didn't go to that school. In addition, as you know, Mark uses the historical present tense in his writing, so even though these, these events took place 2,000 years ago, it sounds as though they're taking place today. You all know that immediately is the most oft-used word in the gospel, and you also know of the Markan technique that is sometimes referred to as a sandwich, where he begins to tell one story, then that story is interrupted, and then he completes the story. So for instance, Jesus, Jesus' heart is rent hearing the, that Jairus' daughter is sick, and he heads toward the daughter only to be interrupted by the woman who touches the hem of his garment. This is the sort of thing that happens in the gospel all the time. And we know, though we might not get it in, in week-by-week bites, but the gospel is packed with stories of miracles and preaching and teaching, healing and exorcising. There is controversy and conflict. The big crowds are always pressing in on Jesus when he's outside. Every room that Jesus is in is too small because of people pouring into the room. There are hungry people trailing him. Individuals and groups all want something from him. There are callings, there are killings, there are demanding demoniacs in stormy seas. And we hear right from the start that Jesus gets up uh, in the pre-dawn darkness to go out to commune with his Father in heaven. In today's gospel that we just heard, Jesus is on the move. Uh, he has spent the early portion of his ministry up toward the Sea of Galilee, but as you know from week by week, he has been moving from Galilee in the north down along the Jordan River, he crossed over to the Transjordan side, came down further, crossed back over the river, and now today is in Jericho, the last major stop on the Pilgrim Way. In the scripture that Reverend Elizabeth just read, if you listen closely, you hear that Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho, and, he and his, as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. So we got nothing about what happened in Jericho, clearly nothing of theological import as far as Mark is concerned. And we hear that Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, is sitting by the roadside. As many of you know, Jericho, the site of Jericho, is one of the uh, most ancient sites that we know about for cities. Uh, Jericho and Damascus are the two oldest cities areas that we know about. Jericho has a very long history, long before Joshua and his men come down Mount Nebo and cross the Jordan River and circle the walls of Jericho seven times. Many of you have been on the pilgrimage, and so you have been to current-day Jericho, which is an impoverished Palestinian West Bank town with a big red sign out in front saying that Jewish Israelis may be killed if they enter that town. There's a closed casino on the right with desert brambles blowing through a sun-baked parking lot. But in Jesus' day, Jericho was a happening spot. There was an oasis that, that always brought fresh water. It was on a trade route that connected Africa and Europe, and it was the last stop for pilgrims who are heading up to Jerusalem. Remember, we always go up to Jerusalem, but in this case, it really is up to Jerusalem as Jericho is 900 feet below sea level and Jerusalem is 2,500 feet above sea level. This is a fantastic road to be a beggar on, right? Bartimaeus has got himself a good spot and he is undoubtedly a fixture there. There's a lot of people coming and going. There are prosperous people coming and going and of course there are people on spiritual pilgrimage who may find their heart so inclined. 
We hear that Jesus is with a large crowd. In the scriptures, there are delineations, right? There are, there's the three uh, of, of John, and, John and James and Peter, the three, and then there's the 12 apostles, and then there are the disciples. And when the delineation crowd comes, we're talking about apostles, disciples, and uh, a hangers-on and followers-on, people of sort of undesignated uh, feelings toward Jesus. And in this case, there most assuredly would be pilgrims traveling toward Jerusalem for the Passover season. And as Jesus and the, the pilgrim mob is coming out of Jericho, uh, Jesus gets a shout out. Bartimaeus literally shouts out to Jesus. It says in the scriptures, uh, he, that is Bartimaeus, began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. The next line is my favorite line in the whole piece. It's just tucked in there. It says, Jesus stood still. This feels like a piece of historicity tucked within a narrative, uh, sort of like, um, Jesus was asleep on a cushion in the back of the boat, which is something we hear when Jesus stills the storm. And the reason that Jesus standing still seems so arresting is because the scripture is told in such a way that you don't get a lot of, and Jesus stood still, right? There's the noise and the flow of the crowds. Uh, and Jesus, throughout this portion of the gospel, is just constantly pressing forward. He's like a horse with blinders on, running toward the finish, his destiny in Jerusalem and the completion of his ministry that can only happen in Jerusalem. And his stopping dead in his tracks is a little bit like an airplane stopping just as it's at the end of the runway about to take off. Because you would come out of Jericho and it starts this long winding road through uh, the Judean desert that just winds upward. It's the road on which the uh, story of the Good Samaritan takes place. Now, think about a time when somebody said something to you and you stood still to listen. We have a, we, we have a crisis of lack of stood stillness in our world, of course. We are dissipated by so many things and the digital world has made our ability to be attentive with every cell in our body all the more challenging. You get the sense that when Jesus stood still, he was listening with his whole body, right? a human ear, but a divine heart, and a still soul listening to Bartimaeus amid the chaos. Now our lives, as completely unlike the lives of people who lived 2,000 years ago, in certain ways, uh, our lives are like the lives that are lived in the gospel according to Mark. Many of us have very uh, inspired and inspiring lives. We do all sorts of things in our lives uh, that are helpful to the human condition. Uh, many of us live very fast-paced lives, uh, uh, nearly exhausting lives. Even, you know, we're tired even when we're, we're well-rested, right? It's a very tiring world, and our lives are marked by immediacy. Think of email, by disruption, and of course by life happening to us when we're making plans and trying to do something else. And all of this happens while we are on the way with Jesus seeking to lead a life in deeper communion with him. We attach to Jesus through, uh, through, through the scriptures and through the community where Jesus is caught and taught. We attach to Jesus by, by our experience. We attach to Jesus by the titles that are given to Jesus in the scriptures and by the images and stories that come from those scriptures. And so there are many, many titles attached to Jesus of Nazareth in the scriptures. And uh, Bartimaeus uses son of David, son of David twice, and son of David coming down through the Hebrew scriptures, the Hebrew people, and in Jesus' time would be tantamount to calling Jesus the Christ. So we have son of David, son of God, Christ, Messiah, King, Prophet, Prince of Peace, and the High Priest in the Heavens, which comes from the book of the letter to the Hebrews. We had a reading from that earlier. And we all, of course, have many images of Jesus, right? We have the crucified one, 
Think of all the crucifixes that we have uh, in churches around the world. Crucified, risen, redeemer, Jesus' friend, prayer, the man at prayer, the helper, the healer, the holy one. And then Jesus in John's gospel gives us incredible gifts when he talks about himself. And remember these seven I am statements that I'm going to read have the I am-ness of God, right? Yahweh, uh, I am who I am, uh, the, the name of God. So the I am is, is flesh with godness of divinity. And Jesus says to us, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the vine. All of this, each of these titles, each of these images are helpful to us on our journey on the way at different times and in different places. We don't download all of that into our life every moment of the day. We need different Jesuses for different aspects of Jesus at different times in our life. And perhaps you and me, all of us, may have need now for the Jericho Jesus. Imagine the Jericho Jesus is the one who says, I am the one who stands still. I am the one who listens to you. I am the one who knows you in the chaos of your life. With my whole heavenly body and with my heavenly heart, I hear you. Imagine Jesus saying to you, I see you as an individual. I know your name. Bartimaeus is the only person in the Synoptic Gospels who is healed and named. And who amongst us doesn't want to know that the living Christ recognizes us as an individual and knows our name. What's in a name? Everything. And then in the story, there's the wild reversal, right? Bartimaeus makes a living. Bartimaeus' occupation is to be a beggar. That's how he lives. He's blind. That's his only means to make a living. And he, as part of his work, undoubtedly does the calling. He does the calling out. But now, in the reversal, Jesus is calling him. And who doesn't love Bartimaeus' response? I mean, he basically levitates. Bartimaeus, of course, asks for his sight, which he receives. And then Jesus commissions him to go, which is Jesus' commissioning word, is go. And he follows him on the way. Now, to follow Jesus on the way, remember, is not just like I'm walking with Jesus. It's the spiritual journey as the way too. So what about you and what about me? So the letter to the Hebrews says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In other words, the Jericho Jesus still exists alive in the heavens. And today, just another day, but perhaps today is your Bartimaeus day, right? Perhaps for you today, the Jericho Jesus is standing still, and the Jericho Jesus hears what is in your heart. Perhaps even Jesus is calling you to himself, and he is asking you the question, what do you want me to do for you? Now, many of you may have an instant answer, but it's likely that most of us are as yet unclear exactly what we want Jesus to do for us. And so, after we receive Holy Communion this morning, let's take a moment and see if today is our Bartimaeus day and see if the Jericho Jesus is particularly attentive to us today. And perhaps we might take a moment after Communion and to see if Jesus is particularly attentive to us this morning so that we might experience him calling us to him 
in asking this probing question.